And Ali says, it's time, let's do this, you know. And then Paris have a lot of book signings in the San Diego area and even as far north as Solana Beach, right? Yeah. I said, okay, well, how about the 78 corridor, you know? You know, plenty of nations, no? I go, okay, let's do one. <laughs> so that's how we got that tres. And we don't have to wear a mask. Yeah. <laughs>
And then I'm a mom. I have two children. I teach. I, I have to grade a lot. Uh, Maggie knows, and I'm always great. <laughs> I tell Maggie, Maggie, if you see me on Facebook, it's because I'm grading. So I grade a couple of assignments, and I take myself a little break. Yes, sure enough, I'll be calling her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are now, you grading? Yes, I'm Are you awake? I'm grading, yes. So anyway, so that's about the cover. And I'm just, it's exciting. It's, it's um, like you, you give it all your love, and then it's the, the beautiful work that you've worked on for forever. So the day that she came to talk to Couch for High, Star Club, we were talking and talking about the title. Because she had already published spider Web with us, so she, she came to talk to us about spider Web. But this one's in the work. This one's like... <laughs> Oh, yeah. I love the title. Oh, yeah. Soñando con Mariposas. Sí, soñando. So let me tell you just a little bit about um, the title. So originally it was Kissing Dreams from a Distance. I don't know what it means, but it was a good title. So um, Sylvia Mendoza, she's another Chicana writer. Uh, she wrote The Book of Latina Women. Yeah. 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 The, the, you know that book too? So then she tells me... Um, that, that's, a, that's a mass production title, Dreaming with uh, Kissing Dreams from a Distance. I didn't know what it meant, but I felt like that was the title. And then, um, maybe call, okay, okay. So then Irene Lara Silva tells me, Sonia, I'm sorry to tell you, but I think your book grew out of your title. <laughs> and then sometimes I'm a terca, you know, like people tell you something and I'm like, I don't care. You know, that's my little voice inside. But this, but I'm more mature now. I don't, I don't hear that respo response. And I, I thought, I think she's right. And so she was reading. She said, Sonia, your title came to me. It's Dreaming with Butterflies. And I didn't think that butterflies sounded all that in English. I'm like, no, I'm just butterflies. flowers. As 
As she got closer to the back side of the house, she recognized the geranium clay pots lining along the house. The estafiate and the hula plants were all taken care of. For a second, she thought they were hers, but as she approached a bedroom window, she saw her face reflected. She didn't know if she was La Llorona, or a bruja, or the two of them in one. Through her eyes, she didn't look terrifying, not to herself. Looking at her face did startle her a bit, but what startled her most were her feet. They weren't touching the ground. Her body moved slowly, heavy with time on her shoulders to her altar, where she found her picture in a wooden frame. The only picture of her, the one with her hair tight in a long braid. The candle's flame flickered, and the red, bright pink, royal blue, green, and yellow ribbon hanging from the window frame swayed as she moved to a corner in the living room next to La Virgen de Guadalupe. Her favorite dish, mole rojo, frijoles, and arroz, was still warm with her daughter and her granddaughter's hands. Next to the mole, her family had placed a glass of water to quench her thirst. She remembered who she was. She was Aurora. And her granddaughters, Paloma and Sofia, had guided her to the place of the living. After reuniting the family members, placed next to her on the family altar, Aurora visited Elena. Sleeping next to her husband, she found her in the same position she slept as a child. Her Elenita had her beloved Fortino's hair, wavy like the ocean waves. Staring at her daughter's grown woman's face, Aurora leaned over and kissed her daughter on the forehead. Elena woke up and stayed still and asked, Mama, it is tu? With no answer and heavy with sleep, she went back to dreaming. In the morning, I woke up confident my abuelita had visited the altar both Paloma and I had set for her the night before. I sat on the bed, recollecting my dream, then rose to my feet and stared out the window. I had dreamt I was walking. No, I was floating like a Llorona, but wasn't sure if the woman in my dream was Abuelita Aurora, a Bruja, or a Llorona. It was November. In the time, ay de mi llorona, 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 llévame al río. Tapame con tu rebozo, llorona, porque me muero de frío. And that's the Dreaming with Mariposa, with Dreaming with Aurora. And that's after my grandmother that I never met. But um, I think what happens is that as the scholars would say is that we create a third space where we survive and so for me that absence of you know immigration caused a move and then i didn't have an opportunity to have grandparents and so what do you do like how do you survive well you just recreate them and you go and write. so i want to share that one should i think one is enough or should i read another one or how does that work <laughs> yeah, you can. Um, whatever you want to do, and then is there a personal? Andy's the only one that have read the book already. Uh -huh. She read it. Yeah. yeah. See, I, I, when I read it, I just didn't want it to end wow. because each vignette. Wow. She and also the next one because I got to read it before. You know, you published it, but then you added more. Yes, yes, yes. <gasps> I go, yes, wow. yes, yes. So I was so yes. I just, you know, I have seen the, the movie book. Coco. Coco, see. Remind me of that. Um, you know what's really fascinating is that I'm in, a, I'm in a fight with Disney. Like, I think Disney has done so much damage um, that <laughs> I just don't like Disney or Disney. So, um, so when my, my partner wanted to uh, see Coco and the 
brought my Sikoko. So we went to Sikoko, and my pareja Paulino was crying. And that just never happens at the movie theater with Paulino. And he had a, like, a really um, good connection to the film, but I couldn't, I just couldn't. Because of Disney that, uh, that scarred me. Uh, Let it go. So and so then, um, but then I was like, yes, I see what's going on here. Because I went to Costco, and they said, you remind me of one of the characters in Coco. Okay. They told you that? <laughs> and then, and then How cute. Some people were like, is it Mama Elena? <laughs> uh, and I didn't know in the end what character they uh, thought I looked like. But, but yeah, I have an appreciation Well, you certainly Coco. weren't the singer. That's time yeah. for us to take you to Disneyland then. <laughs> Corey said that I added vignettes, and that's true. So, um, Cholas Falsas was born, Corey, after you read it, and the Wayaba tree mm -hmm. was born. So I'm gonna have you pick. You, you pick the Wayaba tree or uh, Cholas Falsas? Las Cholas. Las Cholas Falsas? Okay. <laughs> okay, so, and then I, I'm sorry, I know you said that's muy muy, and I obviously, that's um, okay. That's for Las Patas is page one twenty. You reminded me of a story about my grandma. Oh. <laughs> that's good. That's that's a good one. Um, oh, look at it. it was on on uh, Las Patas. Okay. We were. She was babysitting us, and I guess we were making a bunch of noise. And she said, "Cállense, yo voy a llamar a la llorona." <laughs> and so there's a knock on the door, and she says, "Pasa, llorona, pasa." Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's a neighbor. Oh, oh it's a neighbor. Oh my god. My mom. It's a good thing she has I, since. Yeah, there's some things that are the older generation would do, and, and now they would call CPS, no? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My mom did something that I think is normal, and then it's like I told a friend who's a social worker, and she's like, oh, that's, that's not good. That's child, you get called. Emotional abuse? Yes, I was like, really? Oh my gosh. Okay. So, um, Cholas Falsas. So, let me tell you about Cholas Falsas. So, Amira Costa, as you know, the elitism of colleges and academia, um, there was a call for the Chola Conference, ¿verdad? Aquí en el Mira Costa. Pero como cholos have a, like a, a negative connotation, que they didn't want to accept and blah, blah, blah. And, and so I just, I know the insight. So then um, they were going to have the conference, but the person who was organizing, Dr. Gustavo. Yeah, yeah, Vanessa. Yeah, um, Vanessa was like, you know what? In the end, it's not going to be here. Right? I'm not going to give you that privilege. So, um, so there was a call for um, anything that you would write for um, for the theme of Cholos, Cholos. And then I was like, wow, oh, yeah, I'm inspired. So I was inspired to write Cholas Falsas, and it was exciting because they accepted it. And then the conference moved elsewhere, and what else? Um, it, was, it was a good feeling, right? Because, um, because I am a Chicana, because I identify as a Mexican-American, and because- and because you're a Chela? Because I embrace all people, right? And to me, I know that, um, that yes, there is a stigma associated to Cholos, but those Cholos were my family. And so I, you know, I, for me, it would be difficult um, to marginalize someone um, that looks like me. So I wrote Cholos, but so we invited our students because you know, Vanessa is such a soft stuff to better students, but then the parents go, No, you can't go to that. Interesting. Because of the title. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I know what you mean. So, if you, if you remember, there was a Chicana writer, her name was Michelle Cerros, Cerrolante. She wrote Chicana Falsa. Mm -hmm. And so then I was inspired for my title as a dialogue of Chicana Falsa, and this was Chola Falsa. So, Cholas Falsas, as Paloma and I walk home from school and approached our house, we noticed Dad's car was in the driveway. That was strange. Dad never took the day off, even if he had a hangover. <laughs> what was Dad doing home so early? 
standing in the door with his arms crossed and his chest puffed out, Dad screamed, Paloma and, and Sofia Martinez, sit down at the table right now. We need to talk. As his Jean index finger directed us to the kitchen table. Even though we didn't know what Dad wanted to bring our attention to, Paloma and I started chewing our nails. Um, I could feel my ears warming up and my top lip quiver. We both knew we hadn't done anything wrong at school. We knew better, but judging from Dad's angry uh, demeanor, it didn't look good. Whatever he was going to scold us about was bad. Really bad. Because Dad turned into a giant lobster with huge red claws ready to eat us alive. Mr. Goldberg me llamó de la escuela y tuve que ir a la oficina. Dad had to take the day off because of us? Our principal, Mr. Goldberg, called you in the office today? Why? Sí, ya les dije que no me hablen inglés. El director dice que tu paloma y tu hermana son cholas. Cholas, asked Paloma. A nervous chuckle escaped my mouth because Mr. Goldberg had pulled a funny one. But it wasn't funny because Dad was furious. No te rías, Sofia Martinez. Si, sí, dijo que las dos son cholas. But Dad, that's not true. How are you not cholas? What do you think people will believe when they see your peacock hair and baggy pants. Dad, but all the girls our age wear the hair and clothes like us. Yeah, Dad, you drive a Monte Carlo and our friends say that you drive a cholo car. <laughs> but you're not a cholo, are you? <laughs> Shut up, Sophia. <laughs> Stay quiet. I'm not very happy with both of you right now. This isn't about me or the other girls. This is about you too. Dad, did they call the other parents too? What did you tell Mr. Goldberg? Paloma asked. I told the principal that my daughters grew up in Vista and San Marco, that I know my own daughters well and they, they are not cholas. And if you could please give me details on this gang of yours I didn't know about. Dad lowered his voice by the end of his reprimand. Go to your room, Aurita. Your mom is getting home, and I don't want her to worry about this. We'll talk about this later tonight after dinner. In our room, Paloma and I started laughing at our principal because he thought we were cholas. He was no prince of pal of ours. How could Mr. Goldberg think he knew more about us than we did? Who did he think he was, God? Some girls change into a different pair of clothes at school. We didn't have to do that. At home, we teased our hair with a hair pig, sprayed our bangs with Aquanet, and fanned <laughs> our hair out. The higher the bangs, the better. <laughs> and yes, we wore blacky pants, but that was our style. Even Janet Jackson wore baggy pants. Paloma and I wore black liquid eyeliner, an outliner lipstick with black eyeliner, pencil, added burgundy or red lipstick, and even mom wore big burgundy lipstick on special occasions. When we went out shopping for back to school clothes, mom and dad allowed us to pick our own clothing. But they always made sure the clothes were picked, they we picked were not oversized, especially Cruz's clothes. Cholas hung out after school. We didn't have permission to do anything after school except to come straight home, to clean, to have proof of his homework, to do our homework, to water the trees in the backyard, to start cooking dinner, to work part-time after school. We weren't tatted up or part of an official gang, the type that has to jump you in like Barrio San Marcos or Barrio South Los Angeles, as Mr. Goldberg claimed. We didn't live La Vida Loca, we live La Vida Boring. <laughs> no, 
prom, no homecoming, no sleepovers, no get-togethers, no nada de nada. Sounds like my life. Our Martinez cousins were the real cholos and cholas, not us. At school, we could, grow, we could throw down if anyone started any trouble with us, but Mr. Goldberg's eyes couldn't see Paloma and I were from the Cholas Falsas crew. <laughs> oh, that was fun to read, Cholas Falsas. Thank you. That's the first time that I read that. Yes, thank you. So did you know that Angie was the principal of San Marcos Elementary? San Marcos Elementary? Oh, my gosh. So that's well, well, it was San Marcos Elementary, and then they decided to make it San Marcos Academy. Academy. So I went to...